what is slapping it everybody welcome to a brand new episode of jerry rig the only show on the internet where we rate and review gear guitars and gadgets as they pertain to that coveted jerry garcia throaty tone right as always i'm davy and please subscribe if you haven't okay so if you don't know anything about me i teach grateful dead guitar lessons here on the channel and also jerry band lessons i'm also in a jerry band tribute uh called saint owsley right i'm also in some dead tributes called chance in the void tennessee's dead right and then on this channel also with my hetero life mate and best friend toby we do a podcast called a drink and a joint it's a lot of fun check out all of our stuff toby does music reviews and song breakdowns that he's working on Mm, it's it, this channel is chef kiss it's everything you've been waiting for so anyways today we are breaking down and checking out the milkman the amp 100 as it pertains to a jerry sound right this is the amp that i use i've used this amp for about a year i know everybody's been waiting been waiting on this one right so i know it's taken me a while to get to it but i just really wanted to really wanted to get to know it right i really wanted to get to know it and really figure out how it works for me right because every amp is different every amp is um has its own little little eccentricities right it has its own little way it likes to be worked and run and stuff um just to go ahead and get this out of the way this is not a sponsored video not at all i even hit them up a year ago and tried to get them to sponsor me one wasn't going to happen uh so i am paying this off i have this i got a loan to do this right so I'm actually paying this off over two years, and so far it has not skipped a beat once. It has never fucked up on me. It has never shorted out. It's never done anything. And I run this dude real, real hard, right? Because you guys know me. Uh, if you do know me, I do five-hour streams every Friday night. I do five hours of Grateful Dead and Jerry tunes streaming from right here at my desk, and this is my workhorse, right? She has done that for a year now. She, she's been that, that, that amp that does that, and it's never never given me issues whatsoever. Uh, a little bit about the amp itself. So the, the amp came out in 2018, and these are all handmade in San Francisco. The man who started the company, Tim Marcus, uh, seems like a really cool guy. So these, these were originally made for pedal steel, um, which is, it, in one way or another, it actually helps with the Jerry sound because Jerry himself was a pedal steel player, and you can kind of hear it. Right, if you think about that and apply it to the guitar, it's got that really kind of bright and chimey steel string kind of sound, right? So it's almost a no-brainer that you would kind of go for a pedal steel amp, which is which is interesting too because you can get that sound out of Fenders. Now, is this perfect, right? So that I got you with the with the title of the video, but is this perfect? No, it's not going to give you the perfect tone. Does it get really close? Yeah, it gets real close. Is it perfect? No. This is what you need for it to be perfect. That's the stuff you need, right? And that's what it costs. That's what it costs to get that, right? And then that's that's pretty well perfect. There are little things you can add in, like that's not including the Alembic kind of uh, mods that they would do on it. Uh, there's also a couple other amps that could do it. You've got the FYD, you've got the, the SMS preamp, but those things all have to run into an amplifier, right? Or uh, some kind of power amplifier, right? So, but the cool thing about the Milkman is it does that Boom, and a little pedal. So this is basically a pedal format amp. Um, it is a 12AX7. It's a it's a 12AX7 tube in there that drives into a Class D amplifier. And what's really cool about that is that it's it's literally Jerry's rig put down into a pedal. And it is so infinitely cool for that that I don't even think you guys fucking understand, really, because it has so much headroom. So this is 100 watts. Right, this is the the Milkman 100. They do make a 50 watt version. Uh, one of my students got one recently, and he really enjoys it. So if you're if you're not doing anything too big, like because I still never have to have this all the way up. I just like to have that ability to have that headroom if I need it. Right, there's so much headroom in here. You'll, this thing gets louder than you'll ever need it through speakers. Right. Um. So so to break it down a little bit, uh, it's again like I said, it's got one 12 AX7 tube in it, and that is driven by this. This guy right here. This is the volume pot. So you've got you've got one volume. You've got a two band EQ. Now see that is like that's like my one gripe about this amp is that I don't have a th at least a three band to where I can I can dial in the mids the way I want. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay. So you've got your two band EQ. You've got your treble and your bass. Right. You've got a reverb uh, mix and decay. And you've also got the FET boost. So the 100 has a built in FET boost. 
and it's really nice. It gives it more, it gives it more bite in the mid range and kind of colors it up and like gives it some natural harmonics. And I actually have a pedal that I built with a buddy of mine, the Jair Drive, right? You see that guy? Cover up my face. You see the Jair Drive there? This is basically that same kind of thing. This is a FET boost, and I uh, live, I'll kind of run this at the very beginning of my chain to give it that, especially if I'm doing Jerry Band stuff, because Jerry Band stuff was a little bit more rough around the edges. It was a little bit more driven than like dead stuff. He was super clean with the dead, but he would get a little bit more dirty with Jerry Band, right? So I, I use this, but also the, the JFET on here is great, but you do have that ability to get a different kind of like JFET uh, pedal if you only got the 50, right? So it's cool. So the 50 though, instead of having the Fed boost, it's got a tremolo, right? Cool. It's a little bit of a trade-off and also a difference of $200, right? So this clock's in at about 900 bucks, anywhere between it's it's somewhere between eight and nine. They have it listed for seven ninety nine, but after taxes and stuff, you're paying around eight fifty, right? Eight fifty nine, somewhere around there. And the 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 fifty is you know six ninety nine, right? So there's a difference about a hundred bucks, a hundred two hundred bucks, something like that. Um, but I would always kind of do the step up, especially if you're a gigging musician. If you're a gigging musician and you're like touring around doing dead stuff or or not, you know, or if you just kind of want that sound, this is the way to go. Um, so on the back here, and you've got your master. So this is the class D. Sorry, sorry. I got, got a little tied up in my own thoughts there. So you've got the, the master here, which is the controls the class D. All right, so moving on to the back panel, what you've got here first is you've got your instrument, instrument input, right? And then from there, you've got pedal out. So what that is is if you've got it on your pedal board, that's how you run your pedals through it, right? Uh, I never use it because I don't use it like that. I use it like an amp head. Right, because I don't put it on the ground in front of me. It's always on my cab there. You see my cab there? That's it's always on top of that at the venue, um, and I just run it like a regular amp head. But it is like it's it's like three pounds. It weighs nothing. So like I'll even like pop it in the back of there. It's like it it is that is like one of the biggest pros of this thing is like how small it is and what a punch it packs. Right. So then from there, the next over to the left or the right, whatever way you're looking at it, is you've got this little toggle switch, and that's for your cab simulator. That is another one of the mwah, just chef's kiss things about this amp in particular is that it has a built-in cab simulator, which is, uh, I don't know if you've, this, this thing is almost kind of unheard of because right next to that, you've got the balanced output. It's got a DI in it. So you can run direct out to a board, and that's what I do on my Friday night. So anytime that I'm doing a lesson and anytime that I'm doing my live streams on a Friday night, that's what I'm using. I'm using the direct out and the cab simulator, and it sounds good. Like for what it is, you can't really get this anywhere else. For what it does and where it where it's from, you can't get it. Again, this isn't endorsed. I was upset that it didn't get sponsored to me, and the fact that I'm still giving it a glowing review and still using it is a huge plus. You should really, really take my word for it. These things are awesome. Um, and then next to that, you've got the ground lift, which is necessary. And then next to that, you've got your your speaker out. So this thing, it, it's 100 watts at 8 ohms. But if you 4 ohms, it's it's 50. And then at 16, it's it's 200 ohms, right? Um, I run out. So I've got two 16-ohm speakers set to, because when you run them together, you got 8. So then I, I run that out to there. And it's the same with my cloth speakers up there, too. So I'm also, so what we're going to do here in a second is I'm going to show you what it sounds like um, going direct, what it sounds like going into cloth covered speakers or paper covered speakers, right? Or coned speakers, sorry. Uh, and then the aluminum cap on mine, right? So we're going to, we're going to go through all those. Cause those are really good Mesa black magics. I believe they are. And then those are my Weber Cali 12s and, um, it sounds great. So what we're going to do is get through that. But first I wanted to show you guys, um, like my settings and my setup here. So I'll show you the close up. So Depending on what you're doing, this changes. So this is your tube, right? So the more you have it cranked, the dirtier you're going to be able to get. Now, if you've got a Jerry guitar, if you've got a, a guitar that's already set up with an effects loop, a buffer, uh, and one of those uh, like a like a 500 pot, like like a 500k pot, um, it's going to allow you to like dial it in more. Um, so what I do when I'm live is I have this tube cranked up to a hundred percent. Like I have the tube cranked all the way up and then I have my, my master volume probably around there, right? Um, 
probably around like 75%, anywhere between like 70, 75%. I've got that, that master volume all the way up. And then I'm just writing my volume on my, on my guitar because those, those higher pots, um, they, they allow just a, a lot more range to be taken up, right? So when you, when you bring that down, it really cleans up the grid in it, but you've still got all this power behind you. You've got all this headroom behind you. Um, and, you, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we start going there. And then so on here, I've always got my reverb kind of set at 50-50, right? It's, it's not too wet, but it's also not too dry. I also, when I've got my effects loop on, I'm running a, a dual reverb, a Ventress dual reverb from Source Audio. That's what I run through it, and it sounds like Jerry's in a concert hall, right? That's what, that's what I'm going for. I want to sound like Jerry in a dream, right? So that's what I always go for. I like it wet. You know, you know I like it wet. Um, but anyways, and then you've got your boost here and I like to keep it around like, you know, maybe, maybe 15, 25%, somewhere around there. Not too much, but enough to give it color, right? Kids, that's what you want. You want, you want those mids and highs to kind of peek out not be too harsh, but get up there. You want the bass almost all the way down. So that's what we've got going on here. I've got my treble all the way up. I've got my bass at like a one or a two, maybe. Right, just enough to give it some some kind of little, mm, you know what I mean. You don't want it to be just completely all highs and mids. Like you, if you're if you're not on something like this and you don't have like, because I also have an auxiliary EQ. You're not gonna hear. I'm gonna I'm gonna play both for you guys. So you're gonna you're gonna hear it just the amp, just as it is, just all the stuff you can do with it, and then also through some of my pedals, you're gonna hear my always on kind of tone right that i always have so i've got just an eq down here on my pedal board that has just like just a little bit of the mids and highs just peeking up just a little bit more because with this like i said you don't have that mid eq you, you don't have that mid eq portion so what i was saying before so in a live setting you have this cranked up but when i do my live streams i've always got this taken out you have to adjust because when you when you come out of that balance you're going to be pushing a lot more than you would be in a room right so I would, I always take the volume always kind of down here to like 15, 25%, somewhere around in there, probably around like 25%, 25 to 30, we'll say. And then I bring the master probably around up to there, probably around like 60, 70%, right? So that's all the difference in that is, but it does change, right? So, cause the cab sim is going to sound different than the actual cab, right? Um, so now... All right, backing track and backing track provided by the beautiful Jeff Williams. I mean, I hope it's okay. <laughs> I love you, Jeff. Go subscribe to him for Grateful Dead tutorials and also Grateful Dead backing tracks. He's the best in the biz. We love him dearly over here at the channel. Um, he's such a sweet man. Um, so yeah, let's do that, boys and girls. Ah! All right, guys, I've got, a, uh, I've got a backing track pulled up. And so now you see that I'm running direct out, right? So I've had to move my master down a little bit so it doesn't clip. And I've also got my, my volume here, the tube over here, probably around like 30, 30%, right? And so you can see that we've got a pretty good tone already. So middle position, uh, hi. So this is Birdie. This is my custom guitar that I built uh, with the help of my friends over at Gig City Customs, Greg Hembry and Aaron Shepard of Sheptronics. So this is her. She's basically Rosebud. Basically the internals are Rosebud. So I've got the DiMarzio Super 2s, and they, they have the ability to be split. Now, okay, so like single coil middle pickup is kind of the strat kind of standard for Jerry Tone. So if you're, if you're going for that through this, you can definitely get it, right? So if we're doing that, so it'd be like um, uh, some... See what I'm saying? So it's got that, it's got that nice feel to it. Yeah, it's got that nice bright feel to it. You know, you can also hit them with the old, you drop it up to the old, uh, the bridge pickup and you know, you hit them with the. Got the old Tennessee jab, but I really enjoy staying on this middle pickup, either split or going full humbucker. So you've got that split and then you go full humbucker. You split it again. See, 
So with that split one, all you got to do is just give it a little bit more juice, right? And really that boost comes in handy too. So that FET boost we're going to throw on here and so you can hear that. And it really helps to color it, right? So, so that's that split. That's that split middle pickup now. So, and so then you go back to humbucker. I really like what that boost does to it. I really like that it fills it out so much. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to play over, um, I'm going to play over this Eyes of the Worlds for a second with the middle pickup, and also uh, I'm just going to do it with the the boost on, and then I'm going to show you what this all sounds like through this with the onboard effects loop on with my other pedals going. Okay, so we're going to do that. Here we go. that the Mutron sounds through through all of this, you know? Throw back on. Wow. 
I really enjoy that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move all this over to the paper cone speakers, the paper cap speakers, and then we're going to do the aluminum cap. All right, so let's do that. The old uh, Mesa Black Magics, and they're not. It's not bad. I mean, it's not amazing, but uh, for what it is, it's not bad. You know, you're still going to be able to get a good sound out because I played through these already doing Jerry stuff for a, a while, and they were they were good. So now you can see over here on the amp that I've got it cranked up on both sides, and now I'm working my volume. So I've got it on single coil middle pickup. It's a lot. There's a lot more heat. And then without the boost. Again, I really like, I really like what the boost adds. I really like the the, the the harmonics that it adds in. Again, like you can get this same kind of effect out of a uh, any kind of JFET. You know what I'm saying? Um, just make sure that that that's what you're getting. Right? That boosts it a lot. You can always that's that's the beautiful thing about this kind of setup of running it through there is that you can tweak everything off of that off of that that volume knob right everything um and what's cool about that onboard effects loop is that it keeps all of your stuff at the same the same volume so what we'll do now is we'll kind of go through a um let's let's do a they love each other over to the effects loop.
right, so that's 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 enough for you to get the idea out of the old the old paper cones, right? So now we're gonna do uh, caps, whatever. So now we're gonna move down to the big bad boy, and then we're gonna come back and talk about my final thoughts on the whole thing because I, I hope this thing impresses you, man, because it impresses the dog shit out of me. I love this thing, and I'm gonna play through it for a long time. It seems like because there's you can keep tweaking it and maybe i might get it modded at some point if that's even a possibility i don't know man i don't know but we're gonna try stuff so now we're gonna move over to the old weber cali 12s in uh in the bartle box which is like my favorite thing i love you guys we'll do all it. right guys now this is this is honestly like the piece de resistance like because this is if you're gonna use it live so like using it you already know that it sounds good going through the going going through the board and now like the the you know the the paper cone, the paper paper cap. That's fine, but this is where this shit shines. This is where it shines. It shines on the middle pickup. Uh, you know, coil tapped, and it's just it's just so impressive, man. It's just so nice the way this thing has has come together. So we're gonna do a little Franklin's tower. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just showing all the different effects that I have. Right. Um. I fucking I love this thing, and then we're gonna do our final thoughts, right? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, split coil, and then humbucker, and then we're gonna do some effects, okay? But this is this is what this is what I love about this. So I'm gonna just kind of like rip it wide open, all right? We're gonna go through a bunch of different effects once we move over to the effects loop, but I mean everything's gonna be up and around there. What we're working on, okay? So here we go.
All right, guys. So final thoughts. My final thoughts on the Milkman, the Amp 100. It is, it's literally perfect for me. It's perfect for what I do and what I need. So if you're a musician, you do a lot of studio work, you do streams, you do live shows, you do all that stuff. This thing is perfect for what you do, right? It is amazing as a, a, a travel rig. It's amazing as a stay at home rig. It's, it's an amazing amp. Just on its own merits, it's a great amp. It's a tube into a Class D amplifier. So one of my biggest pros is that it is a is it is Jerry's rig, just tiny, tiny, right? Are you going to get as much headroom out of that you do out of the preamp of a Fender Twin into a Macintosh uh, power amp? No, it's not perfect. If you want perfect, you got to pay for it, right? If you want perfect, you got to be able to pay for it and dig for it and get all the things you need. This... Um, However, it is not perfect. It is amazing. It's great for what it is, and you can get a really good tone out of it. Uh, it's small. It's lightweight. It's got the direct input that I need. It's got the amazing headroom, not only through direct, but also in a room. It sounds amazing. The versatility is uh, uh, incredible. The way that this thing takes pedals it blows my mind, right? Uh, the price, like, uh, y you know, for, for what it is, it is it is like the cheapest boutique amp you can get at like under 900 bucks man you can't really go wrong would i suggest this over the 50 yeah but if you don't, all you can get is the 50 that's an amazing it's a it's an amazing amp that can still fill a room right it's still enough to play a show um <clears throat> my cons i really don't like that there's no mid eq on it i don't it's not a perfect sound it's really close especially with the, the onboard effects loop and the eq pedal you can really dial it in um and the stigma around going digital, you know, like I, I know that I said before in my uh, Jerry tone, regardless of budget, uh, digital is not the way to go. But if you've got a two preamp, you're going to have the you're going to have the breakup. You're going to have the heat. You're going to have the headroom. So since you're doing a tube into a class D, it's so good. Um, and I would I would change the knobs like the, the knobs that come with it are good, but they come loose. And I don't, and it's on me that I don't have, you know, the Allen wrench to fit it. That's on me. That's not on Tim. That's not on Milkman Sound. That's not on them at all. That's on me. But that's just a personal preference. But I'm just gonna replace the knobs. I could, I've already replaced two, but I'll replace all of them. Um, so overall, it's perfect for what I do. Um, it is, it is the closest thing that you can get to a Jerry rig on a small scale for as cheap as it is, right? Um, go get one. Go get one and uh, send me videos of it. I, I don't know. Did you guys like this video? Tell me other stuff. Like, do you want me to go through and do a different tones on it? Like, this was just strictly Jerry stuff. So, I mean, I can go through and show you different stuff. Um, I want to try out other amps. I would love to try out all, all the different kinds of Jerry amps. But this thing is amazing. I love it. I'm going to be playing on it for a long time to come. Um, please, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when we drop stuff. We drop stuff all the time. Go check out our podcast, The Drink and a Joint. Check out Play Dead, all the lessons. Check out the other Jerry rigs. There will be more to come. Uh, please go check out our Patreon. YouTube doesn't pay at all. So please go join our Patreon. You know, we've got a bunch of different tiers. We've got a bunch of content over there that you'll probably love. Uh, we've got merch on realbird.company.site. We've also, also, if you want to, you can just throw something in the tip bucket because that's always appreciated because, you know, help, help us live in houses and pay rent and, you know, buy food and all that good stuff, you know, to just stay alive. We like that. I got to buy so many strings, you guys help. Okay. So, uh, I'm Davey. You've been great. I love you. Be out there. Just be good people, right? Be decent to each other. Don't be a dick. That's the only rule. The only rule is don't be a dick. Okay. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>